So we have, we have filled out the, uh, our pseudocode, we've filled out the rest of our header, we, um, we've saved, so step, step uh, 10 is save file as and make sure you save it to a location and change the name, okay. Um, we need to, uh, uh, probably, oh yeah, so we need to go to the, now the robot menu and go to motor and sensor setup, which is right here, or, and uh, you can just hit this button. This, this, this button and feature showed up after I created that document. So you can just hit this button, motor and sensor setup. And this is where we have to tell the program what is plugged in where on our, uh, our, our project. So the first thing is motors. We're going to put a motor. We have a left motor in port 1. So we're going to name this uh, left motor. Notice I am using uh, two words here. You can't just use a one word uh, identifier for your motors and sensor setup, okay? You must have two words. Even if it's only one motor, you need to say motor one or one motor or, or something. Now, naming is also important for other reasons. Um, obviously, I've got 10 ports. I could have 10 motors, and what if I always named them motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four? Well, that would get really confusing and in a hurry. We have the ability to do names, so we need to identify motor by location or motor by function, and that will become more and more important as your projects become bigger and more sophisticated. For now, we say left motor. Um, notice, notice also that I capitalized motor. It will make it easier to read. Um, and now I need to set up the type. So I have VEX393 motor is our type. We don't have any other kind of motors in stock here. Um, you don't have to worry about the rest of these things right here. One of the things you do might want to be concerned with later on is when you make something with multiple motors, motor on each side, you're driving a, like the tank around or something, you might find it beneficial to reverse the polarity on one here. So say a positive number on one on your left motor and a positive number on your right motor will make your tank drive forward. But in actuality, if you do a positive and positive, you'll probably end up turning in, in place, and so you'll have to come into setup and reverse the one that you want so that it makes the positive numbers make it go forward. Okay, so there's our motor uh, setup, and then we are going to put a bump switch in port two, and I'm going to name this bump switch. Okay, and the type here is a touch, and that's all I really need for the purposes of this, this demo. For your uh, test bed one, you're going to have to set up the other motor here. You're going to have analog sensors to set up here and, and, and digital sensors to set up in here. I'm going to click OK. And notice how I've got some new stuff showed up here in blue and red. OK. And um, at this point, I want you to add another item. Let, you know, Step number 12, step number 12 on your worksheet is compile program. OK. Um, compile program is now what happened is, if you should notice, these were blue um, and italicized, I think, and now they're, they're proper names and the system recognizes them, and so we can use them later on. If you don't do this, when we go to use the quick menu later on, they won't be in there. One of the reasons why we need to use two words for your uh, uh, naming is if you just have one motor and you name it motor, um, the name will get confused with a with function that already exists in the system. and and you can you know so you can't use this word here you can't use just sensor you can't use just motor because those are a part of the API already okay so now we've got our motor and sensor set up now I'm going to scroll down here task main uh, programs uh, that we write here are in task main lots of programs that are written using C uh, style programming are begin with task main um, there's a special syntax here, task, task space main, with empty parentheses right here, and then we have curly brackets. The curly brackets are super, super important. You need to not mess with them. You need, they need to be there. Your program won't work without it. This is what we refer to as the syntax of the programming language. It's like you know having a title page or having a title or a header at your uh, 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 you know book report. And if you and, and proper punctuation, if you don't do that, then this this it's not correct. It won't work. Okay, so you need to keep track of these brackets. So I got a left bracket to start and a, a right bracket to end. And it's also good programming practice to not put functions or any other information on the same line with these brackets. We want to be able to clearly see them because it's easy to make errors later on as your programs become more sophisticated. You're going to have more sets of brackets with like loops and if statements 
and we need to be able to clearly see what what is where okay so now now my program the first thing I want to do is a bump switch so I'm gonna go over here to natural language and the function we want is what is called until bump until bump is right here not until button until button says if you read the tooltip it says the uh, button on the LCD is pressed it's it, and and if you look at the cortex there is no LCD LCD is a is a piece of equipment that we could add on to the the cortex and it has buttons on the interface and we don't have that so we're using until bump later on you might use something like until touch but for now we want until bump we want to use until bump because we're human okay I uh, sensor port it wants to know the name we named it bump switch and if you notice when I started typing I start typing VU okay you see this list this quick menu here and I'm using arrows to arrow up and down and bump switch is right there so I can just it's selected I can just hit enter and it will fill in the rest of this for me um, and delay time in milliseconds as I said we use bump switch because we're human if we don't do this it might feel like this thing is happening way too quickly and we want to put a little bit of delay in there because humans are slow compared to computers so we want to do 100 milliseconds that's a tenth of a second um, and so that's usually a standard thing. There might be situations where you want to tweak this a little bit where you might have more, more of a delay before things start happening. What do we want to have happen now after we hit this button? Very linear program today. We want to go to um, movement, not robot motion. This is specifically set up for certain uh, applications um, and we're not setting up for that. We want to go here just to movement and we want to use start motor, makes sense. So I'm going to drag that in right below start motor. Um, I'm going to put in some other functions here right now. We're going to use wait time. Okay. If you remember our, our, our pseudocode programming demonstration, we're starting to pour the milk. We want to pour the milk for a certain amount of time. And that's important that we tell the computer to stop. We want to start the motor, wait for a moment, and stop the motor. A common mistake we see is people will put in functions here. They'll put in a start motor and then not put a wait, any wait time in between and then stop motor and then complain that nothing is happening. It's because your, your, your program at, this, you know, at, at, at the speed the electrons move through the system, you're starting the motor and then stopping it and perceptually it's doing the program but you see nothing happening. You need to put a wait in between so you can let the motor run for however amount of time you want it to run for. Motor port, I double click. Uh, motor port, what I named mine, I named it left. See right there's left motor. Okay. Speed, remember we can go up to 127. I double click on wait time, we're going to wait for one second. I double click on motor port, we type in left, and right there's left motor. And that's all. That's our, our simple little program so far. So at this point, it's a good idea to save your program. And now we're going to download to robot. Sometimes people get in the habit of hitting compile, then download. Download the, uh, has a built-in, you know, sort of does the compile before it downloads. So think of the compile as a separate, like, uh, check on your program while you're fixing errors without having to go to the trouble of downloading. It's sort of like a spell check. But um, it will compile when you hit download. So there's a, uh, you know, so you, there's no reason to hit this and then do, then do this again, okay? So here we're going to download to our system. Okay, so sometimes uh, when we change the mode, we, it wants us to uh, power this, uh, cycle the power, and so we just need to turn the cortex off and back on again. This will typically happen when you're changing the communication mode. So I'm, I'm turning the cortex off, and back on, and I click OK. Now I've successfully downloaded. This is the debug program debug window, and this is where we can say start our program. Now at this point, this is where I need to talk about a little bit about safety. Um, we put the until bump here so that we have to push a button on our system in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, start the program. Ordinarily, if this wasn't here, if the until bump wasn't here, we would. Uh, hit start and then the program would execute and motors would start and things would happen. Well, I don't want you guys to get into the habit of having something start here when your partner, you know, one person's on the computer hitting start and your partner might not be prepared for that and fingertips um, 
or hair might be in the way and get caught up in moving parts and that would be bad. So we need to make sure that we are initiating our program with an until bump for safety reasons so that you have, before anything starts moving on your kit, on your project, we're hitting a button on the project so it's clear that we're starting that uh, uh, system and things are going to start moving and, and, and fingers and hair can get out of the way. So now I'm going to hit start. Um, and the highlighted piece here, it's, it's waiting to do that. It's waiting for us to hit this bump and you'll see the highlight will move as the program executes. So now I'm going to press the uh, bump switch on my kit.